We magnify you because you are good and you are great and awesome in power, mighty King of glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the King of kings and Lord of lords. We bless you and worship you. You are mighty. You are glorious. You are able. Mighty you, our Lord and our God. For we bless you. For we worship you. For we honor you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. The Lord is exalted in power. Mighty things are going to happen this week. In the glorious and mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Welcome to this week of healing the family tree. In every day we shall be going through this deliverance moments and we're looking at healing the family tree this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ son of the living God please welcome a neighbor welcome a friend if you're watching on Facebook you're watching on YouTube you can share with a friend you can call them you can tell them to join in because this is one of the greatest teachings and a great prayer we'll be praying together in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm waiting for those that are joining in from different parts of the world. They're joining in from Malaysia. Uh, They're joining in from Botswana, from Singapore, and other parts of the world. Our friends, our partners. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for praying with us. And thank you for being faithful prayer warriors that are supporting this work and this ministry, especially the Worship TV. We bless the Lord. And give praise in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. The Lord is good and great. Many things are going to happen. I believe today God is in a work of restraining the enemy until you learn truth. There's an urgent release, the release of victory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Beth, we welcome you. God bless you so much. I believe... You, you call a friend, you share, because I'm not going to just pray. I'm going to share the word together. I'm going to pray. I believe the angel of liberty, the angel of deliverance, is in this place tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe the Lord is in the business of bringing total deliverance and liberty in the name of Jesus. So we begin right away in healing the family tree and... Uh, before we go into the details of the family tree, I want to say something that each one of you, each one of us, you belong to a family. And God looks at you according to your family. That's why we talk about the family tree. Who is your father and who is your mother? Who are your people? Matthew chapter 1 begins by saying this is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And he begins to say, the son of Abraham, the son of David, the son of Saul, the son of Saul. Because a man is identified by his family. And the issues of life are issues of the family. The foundation, my father's house, my bloodline, your bloodline. And so most of the things that we look in life, uh, battles or victories or infirmities or long life, they are connected to the DNA of the family. That's why I've discovered many years ago, when I began the journey of my personal deliverance, the Lord spoke to me and said, you need deliverance. You need deliverance. And I remember I asked God, from what? And they, it shocked me, from the bondages of your father's house. That's how I wrote my first book, uh, Freedom from Bondages of My Father's House. I didn't understand at that time, how my foundations, the foundation of my father's house was affecting my ministry, the call on my life. You know, scriptures say in the book of Matthew, uh, sorry, Psalms 11 and verse 3, uh, 2, 3, Psalms 11, it tells us about if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do if the foundations tell about the foundation and what is the man's foundation his family 
So we look at the family tree as one of the areas of the foundation. And the healing of the family tree will involve the healing of uh, the cleansing of the family tree from iniquity. Iniquity. And you know, in this week we're looking at uh, healing the family tree and we are looking at the approaching this using the strategy that God has given us in this season and time going in the courts of heaven. And I believe I call this identification repentance, identification deliverance, identification healing, healing the family tree in the courts of heaven. Why? Why do we have to approach it using the courts of heaven? Because the things in our family tree, they give the enemy, the devil, legal right to oppress, to destroy, to twist. It's an issue of legality where the enemy says, I have right to oppress these people. I have right to bring this disease. And he builds cases. If you open your Bible, uh, those that have joined in, God bless you, Mabel. God bless you, Beth, and the rest that are joining on YouTube and Facebook. If you open your Bible, that scripture that we talked about, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 26. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 26. It talks about an important aspect of what I'm talking about. Why do we go to the courts of heaven? Why don't we just pray the traditional way of praying? Why do we have to go in the courts of heaven? How are the, the scripture basis of this? You know, one day Jesus was teaching about prayer. And I remember Jesus gave a reference about a woman who needed to be judged with her adversary. And she went to this judge. And you know, Jesus was teaching about prayer and gave an example of a judge, meaning that prayer can be seen as a court case, as a court issue. Why? Because the enemy is the accuser of the brethren. He is the antidicus. The one who stand against someone in a court case, in court, hope challenges your destiny. The Satan, his demons, they challenge your life and get access to our lives because they are saying, they are saying we have legal right. Look at Isaiah chapter 43. He says verse 25. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 25. I, even I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. And verse 25 says, put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Look at that. Put me to remembrance. State your case that you may be acquitted. Verse 27. Isaiah 43, verse 47. Verse 27. Your first father sinned, and your mediators have transgressed against me. Therefore, I will profane the princes of the sanctuary, and I will give Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproaches. A curse comes to the family, the family tree, because of this iniquity. That's why they put me to remembrance. Put me to remembrance. When I was seeking my personal deliverance, the truth that came to me that really changed everything, when I understood the difference between sin and iniquity, and when I understood the issue of praying in the courts of heaven. The moment I understood, and the moment you understand that God is a judge, and he sits on the throne, which is the throne of justice and righteousness. He's a God who is just. Because he's just and sits on the throne of justice and righteousness, 
he, he judges and makes war. Our God is king. Our God is a judge. Our God is a lawgiver. He's a lawgiver. He's a judge. He gives rules. He's also king. And so, I thought at first that the people's bondages and my bondage was about just a demon. Cast a demon, shout at them. And that was the traditional way of deliverance. Cast out demons. But demons kept oppressing me. Kept coming. Kept attacking me. Even when I was I love the Lord. Even when I was serving God. They, keep, they could keep silent. And then they strike. I remember when I was, I, I was born again. I wanted to uh, love the Lord. And uh, I proposed to this young lady. And we were getting married. We did our introduction. And uh, nine, 10 days to the wedding. She got this dream. An old woman was chasing her. And beat her up on the head. And the same night I got the same dream. An old woman appeared before me. And she said my husband you are leaving me. And you know the next day. The next day she got a headache. And she died. And I was like I'm born again. I'm a Christian. I love God. Why when in this dream there was this woman. I saw the woman. She saw the woman. What does that mean? That I was a legal claim on my life because I was married as a one day old boy to a witch. So there was a legal claim on my life. The enemy did not care. Though I'm born again, he did not care until I learned how to deal with covenants and I learned how to deal with bloodline legal claims of Satan. The devil the accuser of the brother, though I was born again, he waited the day, 10 days to the wedding, and he had access in my life, killed my fiancée, and my fiancée was born again. But why did she die? Because we did not understand about dealing with bloodline iniquities and healing the family tree and going into the courts of heaven and present our cases. So this week, as we go through the prayer, as we go through the teachings, I believe there's going to be a turnaround. Because you, you will stop shouting at demons and casting them out. You will deal with the legalities. Access your life to twist. And then you will save your family. You will save your siblings from the iniquities and the infirmities. You will deliver your household from premature death and failure at breakthrough. The spirit of scarcity, the spirit of lack, the spirit of death will not have access to you because in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, you will see victory upon victory because our God is a God who is mighty to deliver. In Jesus' name. He's mighty to deliver. And you know, many of us, we go for warfare. We want to fight the devil. We want to bind. We want to go and, and start to battles against the powers of darkness. Forgetting something that... If you fight a war that is not sanctioned, it's an illegal war, you are fighting outside jurisdiction. You don't need to, you, you should never try at any time to fight a war that has not been sanctioned, a battle. And how does it, how is, that's how our Lord Jesus fights. The Bible says, if you open your Bible to the book of Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Sorry, chapter 19, not 11. I beg your pardon. Oh, what a great night. I feel the angels of the Lord are present. Liberty is coming away in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining in. We are opening a scripture here. I welcome all of you that are joined in in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. Look at the book of Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. Now I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and who sat on him was called faithful and true. He is called faithful and true. Surprisingly, the Bible says in righteousness, he judges and makes war. 
in righteousness he judges and makes war. Before he makes war, he judges. So before you, you cast out demons and break curses, you need to understand how do I come to the place where the enemy is judged? Because it's a legal matter. It's a legal issue. In the book of Zechariah, if you open your Bible to Zechariah chapter 3, Zechariah chapter 3, the Bible says, verse 1, Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1, then he showed me Joshua, the high priest. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose. Now, look at that word. Satan standing to oppose. Another word is to accuse. So he's bringing accusations. He's there to challenge him legally. They are standing before God. Joshua, the high priest, Pastor Joshua, and Satan at the right hand. And he's bringing a case against him. And he's saying, you are, no, you are disqualified. You cannot stand. There's a case against you. And it is, you know, Oh my God. We're going to have a court session in prayer tonight. Invite a friend. A share with all your friends. Go to your pages and share. To all the groups you belong to, share. Go on Twitter, go on Facebook, go on YouTube. And you those are watching on TV, call friends and say, this is very important. I was telling you, when I learned about courts of heaven and dealing with iniquity, that's when my ministry took another turn. Breakthroughs began coming. That's when I was healed. Because I understood how to bring healing through the courts of heaven to present my case. So Joshua is standing, and verse 2 says, And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now, verse 3, Now Joshua was clothed with the filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filth garment from him. Take away the garment from him. And, and to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity. I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. I have removed your iniquity from you. This is a priest. But he's saying the issue in his life is iniquity. Iniquity in the bloodline. Iniquity in the family tree. So, one of the things the devil uses against us the most is the iniquity in our family tree. That's what Satan will use. When you're about to graduate, he brings out, he opens a file. There are files and files of iniquity. I call them layers or bones. And if those files were not closed legally, the accuser will come and break, disqualify you. At the time you strive in life, you work, you go to school, and you come to the high office where now you're about to come to fulfillment and what God purpose, and the enemy brings a file. A cancer hits you. A scandal hits your life. A disease comes. Premature death comes. And we have seen this in our families where people are destroyed at the age of breakthrough. They rise. The wife dies, the daughter dies, and the man dies in his prime. It's not accidental. People discuss life about politics and what, but it's more spiritual. There is a legal right that certain is used to take young people, young men with potential to the grave before time. Iniquity. Most of us are aware of our sins and transgressions. You are aware of your sin. 
and you are aware of your transgressions. And we, we know our own stuff. We can know the sin. We can know where we've fallen short. But things buried in our bloodlines can be a little difficult to deal with. We can deal with our sins, our stuff, and we fall short here and there. But when it's buried in the family tree, the things that are buried in the family tree, sometimes are not easy to recognize. They're not easy to, unless we can go in the courts of heaven and deal with the issues of iniquity. The iniquity in our bloodlines. Now, you know, why do we have to deal with the issues of our bloodlines? Here is the issue. When Daniel and his brothers and his friends, they were seeking to get Israel out of captivity. And they wanted to return to their to the land of their uh, freedom, to come out of uh, uh, captivity and get the, the inheritance. They repented for their personal sins and the iniquity of their fathers. They repented their personal sins and the iniquity of their fathers. Daniel, a righteous man, Daniel, a holy man, repented of his sins and, his, and the iniquity of his fathers. You can look at Daniel chapter 9. If you look at Daniel chapter 9 and verse 16. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 16. And 17. Daniel chapter 9. You can open your Bible. I want to go slow because this is a very important cl class for you. Daniel chapter 9. Here, O Lord, according to all your righteousness. Daniel 9 16. O Lord, according to all your righteousness, I pray, let your anger and, and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, from your holy mountain because of our sins and for the iniquity of our fathers. Jerusalem and your people are a reproach to all, to all those around us. To all, verse 17. Now therefore our God, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplication and for the Lord is and for the Lord is sake cause your face to shine on your sanctuary which is desolate so iniquity comes in the days of then uh, in the days of daniel and daniel discovered that jerusalem is in desolation and also the the sanctuary is also now a reproach and it says it's our sins and the iniquity. Note that Daniel, you know, Daniel made his supplication and intercession concerning their sins and the iniquity for the Lord's sake. So it was pointing out to God his interest in this matter. And you know, God is a covenant keeping God. And God wants his people to be restored. He wants your life to be healthy. And he wants you to enjoy an in your inheritance and pass an inheritance to our children. So when Daniel repented for the iniquity of the fathers, he was not seeking to change their, you know, he was not seeking to change the, their their eternal destiny, but he was aligning his family tree in the purposes of God. He was aligning the family tree the purpose of God. So that's why we need to know these issues of the family tree and how we do we bring healing to the family tree. We don't heal the dead. We don't heal our ancestors. 
But we heal our families from the things that came in their lives and twisted. The word they is here, twisted. Okay? Twisted. So to discern iniquity, please write somewhere in your book. To discern iniquity in the bloodline, we need, we should understand the nature of the iniquity. Because iniquity means something perverted. It means to be twisted. So iniquity in the bloodline twists the desires and purposes of God. It twists the moral compass of a person's life. Iniquity twists desires from that which is good to that which is evil. Iniquity is, isn't just about a single sin. So let's go quickly into that prayer, that direction about iniquity. So that we can understand what it is. So we're looking at cleansing from iniquity. And we say in that first slide that iniquity is not just a sin that we ask for a forgiveness and it's over. Iniquity is a body of sin. It's a body as we have that slide. Iniquity is not a sin that we ask for forgiveness and that solves the problem. Iniquity is an entire body of sin and evil rooted within our spirit. And iniquity has corrupted the whole structure. Remember, we have the, the we, we, when we become born again according to, to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, we have, which, we have given this exceedingly great and precious promise that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That is 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. Now, iniquity, if we have the, the, that slide, uh, you can give me that slide. Iniquity has corrupted the whole structure for our thoughts and our behaviors. And now it has also infiltrated our bones and organs. And to, to, to dissolve iniquity, we need to appear in the courts of heaven and state our case. See? And remove our case. And remove those cases. So in dealing with iniquity, blood and iniquities, we should be aware of anything that twists and distorts the real intent of God for our families. Yeah, this is very important. In dealing with iniquity, bloodline iniquities in the family tree. We should be aware, the word is awareness. We should be aware of anything that has twisted the intent of God for our families. The intent of God for our families. And the Bible, you know, is good. It tells about, about Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14 that God has wiped away the handwriting of requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us. Contrary. The word is contrary. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Having nailed to the cross. You see? What are those things we, that we should be aware of? Generations of iniquity had fashioned, fashioned some of our families to be known as liars, to be known as immoral, to be known as thieves, to be known as people with anger. So what are all these issues? Maybe there are addictions in your bloodline. Addiction can be, addiction is, a, is iniquity, not sin. Maybe there are sexual issues. Perhaps anger issues. Maybe there's violence. It could be anything. And it's better, it's very important when you look at the family tree to look at at least three, three kind of people 
your siblings, your parents, your children. It's easy. You don't need to go far and see what are the issues that are evident. Me and my siblings, then our children and our parents. Are there anger issues? Are there sexual issues, immorality issues? Are there wasted lives? Are there diseases, sicknesses, and infirmities? Within these three, look at within these three generations. My siblings, me and my siblings, our children. And then uh, tomorrow we shall look at the, that, that table. You know, me, my children, and my parents. And I say, what are the things within these, these three generations you are able to see bloodline issues, iniquities, and then begin to repent the things. And as you continue in this repentance, God will wipe away that handwriting of iniquity. Someone said God is wiping away the handwriting of iniquity. God said, declare with me, God is wiping away the handwriting of iniquity and has taken it away, has nailed it to the cross. That's a powerful prayer. Wherever you are, you can write it and declare it that tonight, God is wiping away. God is wiping away the handwriting of iniquity which is contrary to me, contrary to my calling. Whatever is contrary to my marriage, whatever is contrary to my destiny, God is wiping it away and has taken it out right now. Someone said taken out. Someone said taken out in the name of Jesus. God has taken out the handwriting and taken out right now. Taken it out of the way. Taken it out of the way. That pronouncement, that declaration in your family tree has caused the heaven to open on your behalf. And God, as you say, has taken it out of the way. Has taken that issue, the anger issue, the divorce issue, the premature death issue, out of the way. Because it was a handwriting of requirements that was against you, according to Colossians 2.14. Why don't you quote Colossians 2.14 in the name of Jesus? And begin to say, having wiped out the handwriting of iniquity. Oh, I bless the Lord. Having wiped out the handwriting of iniquity. The handwriting of iniquity. The handwriting of infirmities. The handwriting of shame and reproaches. The handwriting that is a punishment of a curse. God is wiping it out right now. And healing is coming in Jesus' name. Give praise. Give praise. The handwriting of ordinances. You know, I want to tell you, friends, after you have prayed and believe God, have faith that the iniquity is wiped out and taken out of the way. Moses, God bless you for that declaration. It's taken out in the name of Jesus. It's taken out. And as you pray tonight, let me tell you something. Tonight, you see a different person, your dreams, your prayer, the accuser will be silenced. Cases are going to be closed. Sickness will never be found in your blood. I can give testimonies upon testimonies when the people I led in the courts of heaven who were about to die step to stage 3 cancer and we said we took the case to the court of heaven and within weeks this lady was okay, one and I couldn't believe the healing because the moment I knew that this cancer was an accusation file of infirmity in the family tree and we dealt with it there and then in the courts of heaven we pleaded our case we asked God to intervene we asked the blood of Jesus to wipe out the handwriting in the next few days she began recovering cancer she was she's been in remission for some time why and she, she was telling me remember this lady she was called Catherine she told me James my, the mother died of cancer. The grandfather, both sides were all having, were dying, dead of cancer. And her daughter also had cancer. 
And now she was dying also of cancer. And the whole house was called cancer. And I said, this is not about laying hands and anointing you. There's the legal right. There's the accuser. So we entered the courts of heaven. And we began searching and searching and searching. The moment we pleaded the case. And we asked God to, to wipe out the handwriting through the blood of Jesus. And we went through the, the prayer that I want to go through with you tonight. The prayer of cleansing from iniquity. Before we stand in the courts of heaven. Praise the Lord. So I believe you are, you are ready. Pauline, God bless you. Tendo, God bless you. Uh, Samuel, my cousin, God bless you. Beth, God bless you. And the rest that have joined in tonight. In Jesus' name. Okay, let's continue now. So, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you this, this prayer. And you can even pray this prayer and say, Lord, I come into your courts. I stand before you, Lord. Write it somewhere. Lord, I come into your courts. I stand before you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for what Jesus did for me on the cross. I thank you that what Jesus did for me on the cross is now speaking on my behalf before your courts. And here's a very simple prayer. And say, I repent for my own personal sins and transgressions. But I also bring the iniquity of my family tree. I ask that anything the devil would legally use to accuse me would be revealed. I bring my bloodline to you. Someone say, I bring my bloodline to you through my father and my mother all the way back to Adam. I ask that anything that the devil would legally be bring against me would be known. Now, I'm just giving you the summary, but I'm going to do the details. And you can say that I repent for any and all iniquities. So you must ask God to reveal the light of the Lord to reveal the iniquity that is responsible for that sickness. The iniquity that is causing poverty. The iniquity that is causing premature death. The iniquity that is causing addiction. And when it's revealed, you repent. What, and God gives you discernment. He says, I repent of any and all iniquities which I discern in my family tree through my father and my mother. I ask that anything that needs to be exposed in my family tree would now be seen. Anything the devil as my legal opponent would bring against me, I ask that be made known today. And at this time, the spirit of revelation will come to you. Now, quickly, before we enter the courts of heaven, I want us to, I want to take the, these like the entry prayers, the confessions and the renouncing. You know, that first slide was explaining iniquity. And let's go to the next slide so that we can write them and pray them in Jesus' name. The prayer of dealing with iniquity. Can you give us that slide, please, in Jesus' name? What a great night. It's long since we prayed together, but I believe we're going to go step by step. Okay? Step by step. Okay? And give me the next slide. We have looked at all these. Okay? Psalms uh, 66 verse 18 talks about if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So I want to be hard. I want my case to be hard. But then if I regard iniquity, look at that verse, that psalm. But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Has attended the voice of my prayer. So let's continue. And so these are the acts of repentance. We talked about that in the conference. And so we're going to go through the confessing, the repenting, and the condemning. Okay? So let's pray. Lord, I humble my heart asking for a spirit of repentance to come over me. That's very important. Convict me to the level of my iniquity. You are discerning the iniquity. Show me what my ancestors did that is affecting my life. 
that is bring curses and obstacles that hinders the life of victory. Wait a minute, stop there, leave the slide there. What is this stage? It's called awareness, discernment. You must be aware of it. Ask the Lord to reveal it, what is being brought against you as an accusation. That is very important in dealing with iniquity. Who, who in the family tree is manifesting this sickness? Who of my people? What accusation against my ancestors, my people, my, uh, my bloodline in the family tree? Who of these is causing this? So you are coming to awareness. That's why you are saying, convict me to the level of my iniquity. Okay? Convict me to the level of my iniquity. And let's continue in prayer. Now, this is the entry prayer. The next prayer is very important. The next prayer is very important. The next slide. So you ask the Lord, Lord I ask you to forgive my iniquity and the iniquity of all my ancestors. We have all sinned against you. So you are doing the confession. But today I repent of my entire ancestral line. You are on the family tree. And for my mother's ancestral line. Because we committed what? We committed what you discerned. You remember the table of iniquity. We committed all in the first generation, the first father table, that table on the screen. We committed sorcery. We committed divination. We committed bloodshed. We committed adultery. We committed fornication. We committed witchcraft. We committed robbery. That, that is the, the first fathers. That is the first father table, the table of the first fathers. We committed that and we are now confession. I confess sorcery. I confess divination. I confess bloodshed. I confess adultery. I confess fornication. I confess witchcraft. I confess lobbery. I renounce rebellion. I renounce idolatry. I renounce bitterness. I renounce injustice. I renounce impurity. I renounce immorality. I renounce greed. And now, Lord, heal me and deliver me from madness, confusion, insanity, barrenness, poverty, slavery, infirmities, death, addiction, shame, reproach, oppression, vanity, blindness, rejection, demonic opposition, violence, abuse, sorrow, captivity, defilement, and abuse. And so the third, the affliction, God removes the affliction because you have confessed the, the, the sin and renounced the transgression. And you are, you are doing this before you enter the courts in Jesus' name. You see? So, you know, you continue to pray and say, Lord, I ask you to forgive my iniquity and the iniquity of all my ancestors. We have all sinned against you. But today I repent. Repent. You know, it's, it's easy. I repent for them and for my mother. And I ask you to forgive us, all of us, and to cleanse me. Forgive us and cleanse me. Purge from my spirit, soul, and body all these iniquities and their afflictions. Most times we say, God, take all the affliction. But you don't ask the Lord to purge from your spirit, soul, and body the iniquity and their afflictions. The iniquity, someone say the iniquity and their afflictions. The iniquity. So you are bringing healing the family tree. Okay? You are bringing healing the family tree by asking the Lord to, God, to judge, to, to purge, not to judge, to purge the iniquity and, uh, and, its, and its transgressions. And then you continue to ask the Lord and tell the Lord, Father God, here I am today in the name of Jesus. 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for joining in, those that are watching on YouTube. I see many of you have joined on YouTube. And uh, so we are now continuing in cleansing, cleansing from iniquity. Not cleansing iniquity, but cleanse from iniquity. The next prayer, it's about Almighty God. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my entire bloodline that and upon my entire family tree i plead i plead the blood of jesus and you're saying do not allow our sins transgressions and iniquities to stop the destinies written for us in the books of heaven in the name of jesus christ oh hallelujah thank you patrick thank you winnie for joining in in the name of Jesus Christ. But I want to pray this. Almighty God, I plead the blood of Jesus upon my entire family tree, my entire bloodline, my siblings, our children, and our parents. So I'm looking at my parents and their siblings. I'm looking at me and my siblings. I'm looking at my siblings, me, and all our children. So they are our children, us, our parents, our uncles and aunties, they are at that level, and their parents. So I am pleading, the blood of Jesus is enough and powerful to cleanse you from iniquity. The blood of Jesus can cleanse your children from addiction and their infirmities. It's enough, it's powerful enough. And it's pure enough. Oh, hallelujah. The blood of Jesus is pure. It, it's pure enough, clean enough, powerful enough, more is sufficient to cleanse us from our from iniquities, transgression, and sins. And so you ask and say, Let the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, let the blood of Jesus that grants you. The legal right to forgive and bless. Speak on my behalf. In other words, in the courts of heaven, I will not speak. I will remain silent, but I will confess my iniquity under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I speak to your children right now. Let the blood of Jesus speak and bless your children, your siblings, and your parents. Because the, it's the blood of Jesus that is wiping away the handwriting of iniquity. It is the blood of Jesus. Oh, I feel it right now. What is contrary has taken, the Lord is taking it out of the way. And what is using now right now is this legal instrument called the blood of Jesus. And you need to pray this prayer one more time. Thank you, Kennedy. God bless you. Plead. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my entire bloodline, upon my entire family tree, upon my children, upon their children. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my parents, my uncles and my aunties and their father and their mother. So I'm going deeper, even down up to Adam. The blood of Jesus. And you ask this, I ask, I humble myself before the living God and ask that every sin, transgression, and iniquity be washed away by the precious blood of the Lamb of God. I humble myself before the living God and ask that every sin, transgression, and iniquity be washed away by the precious blood of the, of the Lamb of God. Say amen. Thank you, Irene. God bless you for that confession. Mm. Mm. It's powerful. We are now applying the blood in the courts of heaven to heal the family tree. We are applying the illegal instrument, the voice of the blood that speaks a better covenant. And as I speak right now, as you apply the blood, I see tumors disappearing. I see marriages restored in the name of Jesus. I see children that had gone away from the Lord restored right now 
Because the blood of Jesus has spoken their behalf. Their curses dismissed, iniquity pardoned, and afflictions removed from their lives. And their minds are restored. Mental illness has gone. Infirmity has gone. Bipolar disorder is gone. Schizophrenia is gone. Barrenness is gone. Destinies are restored. Whatever twisted the mind and captured that man has let go. Because you as part of the family tree and you are applying now the blood of Jesus in the family tree. And you know, friends, I call these the key branches of iniquity that need to be removed. One is idolatry. Two is sexual perversion. Three is pride. These are branches. Idolatry. Idols in our bloodline. Then sexual perversion and bloodshed. Sexual perversion, right somewhere. These are the key branches of iniquity. Bloodshed, sexual perversion, idolatry, the, where we have witchcraft and sorcery, and then pride. There are four branches of iniquity. And now you need to remove them one by one. And let's begin with the idols. Idols. Exodus chapter 20 verse 1. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brings you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above and that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them to serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. So, he's telling them idolatry, idols, because all kind of witchcraft and sorcery are all rooted in the idolatry. Okay? So he said, idols. Okay? Praise the Lord. He said, idols. So he's removing idols. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 25, you shall burn the carved images of their gods with fire. You shall not covet the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it for yourself, lest you be snared by it, for it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Nor shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you be doomed to destruction like it. You shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it, for it is a cast. Okay, so this is the prayer of Removing iniquity. Idols. Now let's look at idols. Almighty God, Father of all creation, the only true God, I renounce the idol in my bloodline and my mother's bloodline. I renounce its worship and its demands. In the name of Jesus, I tear it down from its seat of authority and Cast it out from all households, pedestrians, and places of preeminence. Let's pray one. You know we are healing the family tree. Let's pray this prayer. Almighty God, Father of all creation, the only true God, I renounce the idol in my bloodline and my mother's bloodline. I renounce its worship and its demands. In the name of Jesus, I tear it down from its seat of authority and cast it out from all households, pedestrians, and places of preeminence. I decree, I decree that the demon spirit of this idol, remember you have removed the idol and God has removed the idol right now. So it is there. In every family tree, there is a family idol. Family idols. Their family, a family idol, the one that was worshipped for generations. So you say, I decree that the demon spirit of this idol will never rule over people in my bloodline anymore. I invite the hosts of God Almighty to protect and preserve every living member of my bloodline. Now, 
I call upon fire in the spirit to completely burn this idol and its demons. Now, Harikara Baba Kushita. Now, someone say, Now, I call upon fire in the spirit to completely burn this idol and its demon in the name of Jesus. Now, now, I call the fire. Now, I call the fire in the spirit to completely burn this idol and its demon in the name of Jesus. Now, I call upon fire in the spirit to completely burn this idol and its demon in the name of Jesus. Now, someone pray that prayer and say, Now, I call upon fire in the spirit to completely burn this idol and its demon in the name of Jesus. Now, I call upon fire in the spirit to completely burn this idol and its demon in the name of Jesus. Wow. Wow. My God, I bless you. Something mighty has happened. Something great has happened. Oh, Riba Sekere Kabo Shiara. Wow. Call upon that fire. Because you have now dealt with the idol. Let's proceed and go and deal with sexual perversion. And say, Almighty God, on my behalf and on behalf of my ancestors and my descendants, I humble my heart, seeking your mercy and grace. I confess the sin of sexual perversion as evil and wickedness. I renounce and condemn adultery, fornication, homosexuality, ritual sex, rape, pornography, and all acts of sexual immorality. I ask for the complete healing and deliverance of all victims of sexual perversion in my bloodline. That is your repentance now. I ask for the complete healing and deliverance of all victims of sexual perversion in my bloodline, including me, including my mother, including my sisters, including young boys. Now you are now healing the family tree. You are saying, I ask the complete healing and deliverance of all victims of sexual perversion in my bloodline. In my family tree. No, so it means that some of the sicknesses, some of the things that have been happening is because of sex, they are victims of sexual perversion. The bitterness that came out of rape may be causing the blindness and the barrenness. So when you ask for the healing, including your grandmothers, including your grandfathers, who are victims of sexual perversion, you are bringing healing to the family tree. And you are removing idols. You will bring deliverance in Jesus' name. What a great day. What a great day of healing and complete deliverance for all victims of sexual perversion in the family tree. What a great day today. The aunties, the mothers, the children who are victims of rape, of adultery, of homosexuality, of pornography, of polygamy. And you are healing the family tree from polygamy, from ritual sex. In Jesus' name. And now you need to cast out every seed and every memory. You ask now, in, you say, I cast out every memory, every seed, and every desire that is causing lust in my entire bloodline. I cast out every memory. You need to cast out the memory now. The next slide. I cast out every memory, every seed, and every desire causing lust in my entire family tree. I receive the cleansing of the soul, mind, spirit, and blood by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I lose myself and my entire bloodline from the demons of Sodom, Last, Jezebel, Babylon, and all their ruling spirits. I ask you, Father God, to remove the curse and bless us with purity of heart, eyes, mind, and soul in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. So that's we can proceed and deal with the branch of bloodshed and deal with it once and for all. Then tomorrow we can go into other things. So I renounce ritual murder, violence, mob justice, abortion, racial cleansing in my bloodline and my mother's bloodline. I condemn any kind of bloodshed. I condemn all the demons that received and demanded human blood sacrifices. I ask the rod of the Lord to smite every demon spirit that received and receives power through bloodshed. Hey, friend, that is very powerful. That is very powerful. And someone now acknowledge and pray and say, I acknowledge the cleansing atonement of the blood of Jesus shed at Calvary for the forgiveness of sins. I plead the blood of Jesus upon every seed of my bloodline, my mother's bloodlines, my father's mother's bloodlines, my wife's bloodline, and her mother's bloodline. I ask you, Father of mercy, to deliver me and my bloodline from disorders, afflictions, and disasters resulting from the cries of bloodshed. I ask the voice of the blood of Jesus to speak in my bloodline. We are back on I acknowledge. I acknowledge the cleansing atonement of the blood of Jesus shed at Calvary for the forgiveness of sins. I plead the blood of Jesus upon every seed of my bloodline. My mother's bloodline. My father's mother's bloodline. My spouse's bloodline. And their mother's bloodlines. I ask for you, Father of mercy, to deliver me and my bloodline from disorders, afflictions, and disasters resulting from bloodshed. I ask the voice of the blood of Jesus to speak in my bloodline. I ask the voice of the blood of Jesus to speak in my bloodline. And after that prayer, you need now a prayer of consecration. This is the last prayer we are praying. A prayer of consecration. It's very important. Almighty God, I consecrate to your holy name the very moment of my conception. I declare it blessed, full of your eternal purpose, and covered by the blood of Jesus. I surrender my life to you to accomplish all that I was created to do. I receive your DNA with all the spiritual inheritance in your blood in the name of Jesus Christ. So you've dealt with the idols, and now you have prayed a prayer of consecrate because iniquity is an issue of conception. It's an issue of conception. Psalms 91, 51 talks about my mother conceived me in sin and I was brought forth in iniquity. So meaning it is an issue of praise the Lord. It's an issue of con conception. It's in the DNA. That's why we need to look at uh, that important aspect of daily consecration at birth in Jesus' name. What a great night. Now at this moment, we're going to pray together. We're going to come in a prayer of agreement after we have dealt with those issues. We're going to deal with, now remove the idols. We've dealt with sexual perversion. We've dealt with bloodshed. And we've consecrated the issue of conception. So whatever may have twisted your life, your destiny at conception is dealt with right now in the name of Jesus. Because you pleaded the blood of Jesus to wipe away the handwriting and take it out of the way, out of your life in the name of Jesus. I would like to share these prayer points and these slides with you. If you can contact me through my email or my WhatsApp. I can share this with you so you can pray, the, pray them every day. 
You can pray them every day. When the, the moment you have begun dissolving and dealing with it, especially doing it the right way, your destiny is coming forth. Your brothers and your sisters are rising to their divine destiny, what God purposed them to do. It has been the iniquity that has taken them in drunkenness. It has been the iniquity in the bloodline, iniquity in them, that has taken them in addiction, in immorality. And I'm seeing marriages restored. I see talents coming forth because the enemy has been dislodged out of your family, out of your system, out of your memory, out of your DNA, because God has wiped away the iniquity. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Father God. Now that we are standing in the court of heaven, Father, I thank you that today we began the, begin the journey of changing the course of our destiny, changing our way, that we may be the men you purpose, the women you purpose. The chains are breaking, the prisons are open. They are coming out of, the, of captivity. Father God, you are locating the regions of captivity and lifting those souls that have been in the pits of iniquity. They are coming out and coming out. You are coming up and coming out of the pit of iniquity. Your dreams are changing. Rejection, bitterness, and rebellion removed from your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The roots of iniquity, which are bitterness, rejection, are now dealt with right now. As the branch are cut, also the roots are drying. In Jesus' name, Son of the living God. Oh, I bless you, Father God, for the healing of that family tree, delivering them from the iniquity and restoring their destinies. In Jesus' name. Amen. We can use this opportunity to present our families, our lives before the Lord by coming in the courts of heaven after we've dealt with iniquity. Now we qualify, first of all, to ask for an injunction. Whatever the enemy has been bringing, accusing you and, uh, and pursuing you, ask now for an injunction. And also ask for a divine restraining order. Appear before the Lord. And most times when you're asking for a divine restraining order, you need to appear before the Lord with a specific case, a specific prayer, a specific issue. For example, someone watching you say, concerning my marriage, concerning my ministry, concerning my health, the enemy has tormented me for years. And now I want an, a divine restraining order concern my, uh, my health, that the enemy, the evil, the demon, never to harass me until my case is decided. So uh, someone watching right now, tonight, there is a desire for God to send an issue, an order right now that your child, your son, your daughter will not die. And at this moment, as you appear before the Lord, for a spe you must be specific. And you must appear with a sacrifice. Something from your hand. David said, I will not give to the Lord what has not costed me. A plague was killing Israel. And David needed a restraining order to stop the angel, to stop death. So what did he do? To raise a restraining to, to go to, to stop the death. Because death was about to destroy Jerusalem. And David needed a restraining order to stop it. He raised an altar, gave a sacrifice, and on that altar, Talauna, Talauna's threshing floor, the plague stopped. It was not just words. He did something. When we need a restraining order, we must raise an altar and we must release a sacrifice. And say, Lord, for this sake, let me give you another example. One day, Israel, God told Israel to go for war. And as they are winning the war, this king could not stop Israel. So he got his firstborn, offered him on the altar, and war turned against Israel, though God had told them to go. Why? The man gave an offering, gave a sacrifice that became a restraining order. God looked at that and stopped Israel from advancing, and Israel turned back. We shall read that tomorrow. So I feel tonight someone 
watching and praying with me. There is a specific issue, like a plague that has been sweeping your family. And you are saying, God, I bring this sacrifice as a, a sacrifice for the restraining order. I bring this offering. I want to stand, I want to give this tonight. On our first day, I feel we should release an offering. You should send, you go to your phone, go to your website and release before we pray. Right now, do it right now. Because why? It's a night of restraining order. We're going to spend the night in the presence of God. And I want to stand with you in prayer. What is that specific thing? What is that specific thing you want to release? What is that specific thing you want God to stop? You can send, you can give, you can give on my number, you can give on the number on the screens. But I want us to, you know, first of all, be specific. What is that one thing you need a restraining order? And why you are raising that altar and you're putting that sacrifice on the altar and you're saying, God, like in the days of David, when you stopped the plague, like in the days of that king, when you stopped even Israel from attacking him, stop this issue. I am appearing in the court of heaven and I'm appearing with my restraining order offering, restraining order sacrifice. And no, I don't, I don't emphasize that, but I feel today this is a legal issue. I'm emphasizing someone to send your offering, send your gift, send your sacrifice, and we agree with you. I want to agree with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I know on this specific day. Amen. And for those of you that are saying, Pastor James, I want to agree with you tonight. Your prayer request, your restraining order request, you send it on my personal number. Because tonight I'll be before the Lord and I'm going to appear in the courts of heaven for your sake. You go to my number, you go to my email and send your specific issue. You are saying, Pastor, this is my sacrifice and this is my prayer request. If you are watching on TV, do the same. You don't call but send on my number 256-787-549424. It's on the screen. They are putting on the screen you say, Pastor James, before morning, I need an urgent restraining order. Something must, be, must stop tonight. Something must be released tonight. Maybe a document must be released tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. So use, use that number on your screen so that we can be in agreement, especially in the issue of restraining the enemy, restraining death. We don't even need to wait until we finish the lesson. You need a divine intervention tonight. Is there someone watching and say, Pastor James, I need an intervention tonight. And it's urgent. It's not just a, a wish, but it's life and death. And I need God to, to issue a restraining order. Father, I thank you for they that are responding right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I thank you that God, you're doing mighty things right now. Oh, hallelujah. We bless the Lord for all of you that are joining. Lord, have your way as we stand in agreement, seeking a divine restraining order. Seeking your intervention urgently. Someone needs provision. Someone needs healing. Someone needs liberty tonight so that they can learn. Someone needs to be free from a pain so that they can go through the lessons. I know it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, what a great night. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining in. And I'm sure tomorrow we shall continue now in the detail of healing the family tree. Now that we've dealt with the iniquity, it's gone. Please contact me if you need the slides. I will send them to you and you use them free of charge. In Jesus' name, amen. I send you greetings from Pastor Juliet, my wife, and the entire w uh, Worship TV team here. The Lord bless you abundantly for the great work that you're doing. Thank you for supporting us, and shalom, and have a great night. In Jesus' name, amen.